Amen. No matter how much you pray for prayer to deliver maximally, there is the element of faith. Glory to God. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Praise God. Everything you do without faith it has no root of growth. In verse 6 he says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. Impossible. Why? Because them that come to him must believe that he is. And then is a rewarder of them that seek him diligently. So when you seek him without faith, you will not please him. And if God is not pleased, there will be no answers. Praise God. Hallelujah. He says, by it, the elders obtained a good report. So faith is the giver of good report. I want to, you to understand, for you to walk with God, you need faith. Because we have not seen God with our optical eyes. We have only heard about it. For you to walk with him, you need to have faith. And also, it is only faith that makes you stand out among the rest. So, it's faith that makes you stand out and get the, the, the results you require in life. The same Hebrews chapter 11, verse 35. 35, no, 32, 35. Hebrews 32. 32 says, and what more shall we say? And these are men of faith. He says, what more shall we say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets. The next verse. Who through faith, not prayer, through faith subdued kingdom, worked righteousness through faith. They took over kingdoms. It says, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions. They stopped lions. Talk about Daniel, Samson. Why? Because of the element of faith. Not the element of prayer, element of faith. They obtained promises because of faith. Are you hearing me? No matter how much you pray, if you have no faith, you're wasting time. There will be no answers. Verse 34, it says, Quench the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Because became valiant in battle. Turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Aha, uh -huh, verse 35. Women received their dead. Not by prayer. Raised to life again. Women received back. People that were dead. Women received their children back. They believed our children cannot just die. They receive their children back by the act of faith. Anything that you must get, you must have faith. But let me say very fast, faith is in dimensions. Faith is in levels. I'll mention them very fast, then I'll try and touch on them, all of them, or the much I can. So any promise of God in scripture can only be received by the element of faith. If you believe God will not do it, God can do it, it cannot happen, don't pray about it. It will not. Now, the best thing about faith is that I can believe God for the little. He will give it to me. I can still believe him for the greatest. He can still give it to me. I've always given this illustration. 
Three people are praying for house rent. One, the house rent is 3,500. They ask. Another one is asking for house rent. The house rent is 35,000. Another is asking for rent, 350,000. Will God provide? Yes. The one for 35, God will give him 35. The one for 35, God will provide. The one for 300 and, 350, God will provide. And the one that is paying mortgage of 3.5 million, God also will provide. It is according to the level of your faith. That is why you must grow your faith. Grow your faith. You, listen. What your faith cannot attract, you can never see in your life. Don't be deceived. Faith is not only a confession. Faith is the reality of your spirit. It's a reality of your spirit. I know God can. You may have grown to a place. God, this one I know God can do it. Praise God. Are you with me here? Abraham knew that even if I am 200 years, he said, I know in whom I believe. The one I believe, I know that person. It is your, until your faith can grow to a certain dimension, there are certain things you cannot pull. There's no promise that can work until you have faith. If I prophesy accurately, tell you tomorrow, you'll go to heaven and you don't believe. Tomorrow morning, you'll be here. Are you hearing me? It is faith that delivers what you expect. Without it, you're wasting life. So, I want to talk about three types of faith. Faith number one is no faith. People that don't have faith. These are the worst people to deal with in life. Because they don't believe anything. Mark chapter 4 verse 40. They don't believe anything. These are people that you must convince. You must convince. You need, you, they need 1,000 proofs. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? He said, you people, I told you that I will go and come back. You have seen all the miracles I've done. Did I tell you on the third day I will rise? The Bible says they entered the house and locked. They had no faith. Faith makes you act like an unbeliever. Praise God. We have people that have no faith. No matter what they hear, no matter what they see, they don't believe. That is why faith is a living force. And every living thing dies at one time or another. So if you don't work on your faith, it can die. There is a way problems can come and it kills your faith. Kuna vitu za pitia ushanga na ukweli tu tuambie ni kweli. Mungu alisema. Kama papa alikuwa tu msitumko. That someone was just good, but there's no reality. One day I told the lady, I see you get married outside this country. And uh, I see you having a wedding outside this country. And it won't take long from now. You could not say amen. Number one. She was of age. She was almost age hitting 50. Or oh, 50, 50 by that time. Number two. She has never thought of leaving this country. Never don't dream it. She has not, not even an ID. I don't know if she had an ID. Start living this country where meet one man from another country. My, how? The next time I'm meeting her, she went out. She got married. That particular moment, she had gone through a lot of problems. She didn't have faith that God can open door. She has dated this man, go, this man, go. So which other man will come and now marry? Which one? There are people because of the wind of life. It has killed their faith. Amen. Anything that has killed your faith, I command your faith to come back alive. That is why you need to keep on building your faith. Keep on. Luke twenty-two thirty-one. 
you need to you need to work on your faith. Many people have no faith at all. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I've prayed for you that your faith should not fail. Uh -huh. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. He said the devil has desired to sift you. I, my prayer for you, Simon, is that your faith does not fail. So faith can fail. If faith is not strengthened, faith can fail. And because Peter did not work on his faith, he said, ah, Master is dead. No problem. Let me go back to fishing. This thing was a wonderful time. At least, uh, now these things, eh, it's okay. Let's just go back to our normal work. He said, but when you have returned to me, you shall be strengthened. Are you with me here? The problem was that faith can fail. Don't be deceived. And many people, why they are not receiving miracles is because their faith has failed. You have to believe this thing. And for your faith to stand, you must keep on building it. Build it. Work on your faith. Faith, when there's a lot of problems, challenges, faith can fail. That's why people tell you, I no longer have strength for prayer. Your faith is failing. Because what boosts your, your, your faith is prayer. When you're with God, you feel built up. Signs that your faith are failing, number one, is when your prayer life goes down. Number two, when you start living on the sense level. You know what I mean? Sense level. You use your mind more than your spirit. When you start operating on the sense level, you're no longer believing God can do it. Um, how can I do it? Number three, when you start putting confidence in the arm of flesh. I wish my uncle opens this door for me. Ah -ah. You move from what God can do into the arm of flesh. I don't know if you're with me here. You move from God into the arm of flesh. Your confidence is in what man can do for you. You're looking for people to help you. Faith is so rugged and so Faith is so audacious and so self-satisfactory. To an extent, it can stand without the help of any man. Faith is a jewelry. I don't need no man. It will happen. When you see now you're looking for... Your, number four is when you feel uncomfortable at all times. You're always anxious. When you don't know your faith is failing, you're anxious. Aki papa ni 55. Niko 40. Kuna mtu. Charlie, Baba is not well. When you get there, now you're anxious. Hey, where will money come from? This thing I'm feeling can kill me. You know, people have, have just, you know, my uncle used to have something here. And he died. When now, you become so problem conscious than God conscious, your faith is failing. Problem conscious. He ah, These are going. These are not working. How? You know, things are getting worse. When you become problem conscious, Imagine Peter is sleeping. Tomorrow they are going to chop off his neck. Peter is sleeping. That night, he knew the, the kind of God he serves. God will deliver me. Oh, yeah. That is just, let me sleep. And the angel came and woke him up. The man was asleep. You can't just, why? Because yesterday God delivered me. And that day he delivered me. Let me sleep. When you become too problem conscious, no, your faith is failing. Your faith is going down. If you are not careful, you start behaving like a sinner. You will do what sinners do. No matter what you face now, hold on to God. What do I hold on to? Hold on to the promise of God. The only way you keep your faith alive is by holding on to the promise of Romans 4, verse number 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith giving glory. So, it did not stagger. It did not waver. It did not look aside. God said it. God will do it. I'm holding on. The moment you allow your anxiety, your fear to control your spirit, then you will lose it. Can I hear me? No faith makes you a victim at all times. It makes you defenseless and totally helpless. When you have no faith, it makes you defenseless. It makes you a victim at all times. It makes you totally helpless. Number two is what I call little faith. 
The first one was no faith. The second one is little faith. Praise God. Little faith cannot confront challenges. Now, everybody has faith here. Everybody. We are saved by faith, right? So everybody has faith. But that faith cannot handle anything. It has to grow. Little faith or small faith is full of doubt. They doubt everything. People with small faith, they doubt everything. Ah, really? Really? I think God will bless me. Really? Oh. They don't believe. And then they ask me, really, really, God will, really, what you're saying God will do it? You mean it. Prove it. How do I prove it? No, this prophecy you're saying, I believe in what, because what you're saying is true. But this other side, you say, really? They doubt. Small faith doubts a lot. Doubt a lot. I've prayed for you. You, eh, I'm okay. But are you sure it has gone? It doubts. Little faith doubts. It doubts what God is able to do and what God is doing. Are you with me here? It doubts a lot. Matthew 14, 27. It doubts a lot. 31. Matthew 14. It says, but immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. The next verse. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it is, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. The next verse. So he said, he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and, he began, and, and, and beginning to sink. He cried out, saying, Lord, save me. He began well. He had faith. But he looked, small faith looks around. And the easier way to sink is to look around. He saw the wind. He saw the storm. Say, hey! He was walking very well. He was on water. But it turned out. People with small faith, they look at who is talking. What are they saying? They, they, they always look around. They, they, they have no focus. People that have small faith fear witches. I believe God will handle this, but uh, are you hearing me? We believe, but we're still afraid. We believe, but still we want to, we are afraid. We look at the, the, the things that are around. We fear. We doubt. We doubt the hand of God. We doubt the ability of God. We doubt what God can do. We doubt even what God has said he would do. The hardest people to minister to are people with small faith. Mark, 6, Mark 14, 46. Mark, Mark 14, 68, sorry. Mark 14. Verse 68. Little faith cannot stand in the day of adversity. It says, but he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you're saying. Peter is saying now, saying, I don't know Jesus. The man that you have worked with, that was little faith. He said, but he denied it, saying, I neither know or understand what you're saying. And he went out of the porch and a, a, a roster crowed. The next verse. And the servant girl saw him again and began to say, to those who stood by. He is one of them. The next verse. And he denied it again. And a little later, those who stood by, by said to Peter again, Surely you are one of them, for you are Galilean. And your speech shows it. He said, Come down. And he began to curse and swear, I do not know this man. Whom you, I don't know Jesus. What are you saying? Oh. The next verse. A second time, the roster crowed. Then Peter called to mind the word that Jesus had said to him before the roster crossed twice. You will deny me three times. And when he, th when, the, when he thought about it, he wept. They are always weak during adversity. When there is trial, they chicken in, they cry. People with little faith, they are very dangerous because they are only okay when everything is okay. When they have no job, 
They are always perplexed. They are always in fear. They are always panicking. Oh, 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 what will happen? They are always afraid. Let me tell you something. When your faith is small, you cannot do anything. You cannot get any answer. Little faith kills. Because your faith is strengthened during adversity. That time you don't have is the time God is strengthening your faith. James chapter 1 verse 2. James chapter 1 verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith, the testing of your faith produces what? Patience. When you have faith, the first thing faith produces is not answers, it's patience. Capacity to wait. Ability to be calm and wait. There are people God has not given you that breakthrough. Be patient. The first produce or results of faith is not breakthrough. It is patience. Then it says, the next verse, it says, but let faith, say, but let patience have its perfect work. Don't rush patience. Be patient to the last limit. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So it is until your, 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 your patience is perfected. No answer yet. What do you mean? It's when you come to a place, you enter rest of your mind, rest in your heart. God will do it. And you start thanking him for it. It's no longer a prayer point. It's no longer a concern. It's no longer a subject before God. Faith having perfect work. There are things I pray for once. I forget. I forget. Once. I forget. Did I believe? Yes. Will God do it? Yes. From that, I leave it. For completely. Whether I'm seeing answer or not, I leave it. It's done. So when, once I have believed, then my faith begins to produce patience. So I'm learning to trust God and allow God to work in his own time. So, the testing of your faith. When, you, when this thing is not coming and you want it to come, your faith is being tested. Now, it has to grow to an extent. Now, it is mature. So, your faith pulls it without you praying. Are you hearing me? I, I'm not worried. I will go to bed. I will sleep. I will wake up. He says, cast your cares, cast your burdens unto him, for he cares for you. So you take the blood, give it to him, go to bed. So God wants your faith. The moment your, your breakthrough is being delayed, God is stretching your faith. He's perfecting you. So an extent, this thing will not control you. Paul is saying, none of these things move me. I count them as rubbish. There are people today, if God blesses them, oh, they will start drinking beer. They will drink beer. Yet they were saved. Have you not had people who are saved? Now they backslid. It's because of the blessing. Their faith was not mature enough. There is no money God can give me that will make me not pray. Which one? Which one? So some of us, lazima mumba kufute. God has to stretch you until it's sure that no matter what happens. Number three, we close. The three type, the third kind of faith. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? It's great faith. Great words. Great faith, Matthew 15, 28. Great faith is responsive. It's a responsive kind of faith. It reacts to life challenges. Great faith, when you're sick, it rejects it. Inside, no, I cannot be sick. It, 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 it responds unconsciously. It reacts unconsciously. Have you ever seen people, for example, there's a, there's a problem, or the car, or rather, there's an accident. They will cry, Mama, yo. Have you heard them? Others will say, Jesus. What's the difference? This one. There's something in how, in him, that responds. The faith responds to the name of Jesus. Umingine. I respond to Gijalu. 
to respond to powers in the father's house. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. It responds. The woman said, Sir, even if the bread is not meant for the children, it's meant for dogs. Even dogs eat the crumbs. Say, ah, ah, woman, what you have said, that's great faith. You believe even, even if I insult you, because you get healed. Great faith responds. It reacts violently to situations. Reacts violently. It reacts. It is also calm during adversity. It's calm during adversity. It does not panic. Great faith does not panic. Are you with me? When there's a situation, it reacts positively. You see, you come to a level whereby these things don't bother you. But you must grow to it. Great faith responds. Are you with me? The centurion man in Mark, in Mark chapter 8 verse 5 had great faith. He told Jesus, just send your word and my servant will be made whole. That is great faith. Great faith will always deliver great victories. Great faith commands great signs. Great faith takes you, takes deeper root from God's word. We also call it the God kind of faith. Number four, we have what we call the spirit of faith. The spirit. It's a kunaro. It's the spirit of faith. Are you with me? Second Corinthians 4.13. We have what we call the spirit of faith. Those kind of people operate in a different realm. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 4. It says, and since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe. Now, this is where the spirit of faith operates. Say, I believed, and therefore I did what? I spoke. We also believe, and therefore, the spirit of faith is always talking positive. I'm blessed. I'm on top. There's one boxer. He's, 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 he's not saved. He's arrogant. He's rude. I like him with one thing. Since he began boxing, he has never lost once. Not once. Till he retired. Floyd Mayweather never lost once. He retired. He's one of the richest boxers. One thing that made that man win every fight. Every day he has two hours. Of building his faith. So he, he puts on his gloves and looks at the mirror and says, Nobody can beat me. I'm the best in this game. My opponents will go down. On the second round, I'll take them down. He will talk for two hours. Spirit of faith. Anaji Jaza. When he enters the ring, he has already beaten you before meeting you. And as he said it, say, Now because we believe, therefore we speak. Having the spirit of faith. They are because they believe they spoke. Now even us. The spirit of faith talks. Oh God. Of those things which are not. As though they are. How are you? Hey! I'm dying. Finish. Are you with me? When you operate by the spirit of faith. You begin to command the faithfulness of God. At will. In Numbers 14, 24, Joshua and Caleb had the same spirit of faith. They say, ah, we are well able. Don't fear. Let's go. We are well able. Numbers 14, 24. But my servant Caleb, because he had a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring him to the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit because he had a different spirit. That's the spirit of faith. He told Joshua, uh, he told um, Moses, don't fear. These people, we are well able. Let's go. And when God saw it, he said, Aha, the rest will not enter. This one will enter. The people who operate in this realm, according to 2 Corinthians 5 7, we, say we walk by faith and not by sight. We are led by what we, we believe, not what we see.